Sheriff. Mic check. Y'all can hear us? Yeah, it should not. I think so. Hold on. Okay, yeah, they can hear us now. That's saying okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, first and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai. It's your brother, Chief Priest Alan Zalban Loy, a.k.a. the Grilla Hebrew. It's your brother, Sal. Uh, and uh, we just come at y'all with a live class um, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Uh, something on my mind, something on my mind. Got a few things on my mind I'd like to discuss and talk about uh, tonight, this morning, whatever you'd like to call it. I would certainly like to discuss through the spirit and power. Of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So shalom to everybody. Um, yeah, so last night we had um a couple of guests on the situa the situation room who had to get themselves situ had to get themselves situated um through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai by my esteemed colleague, the deacon and myself. Um I mean I was in awe jaw to the floor as I'm sure many of those who you know view live and, and thereafter were um, at the level of madness that was being spewed on behalf of those brothers in their doctrine crazy talk I'm talking about crazy talk we was hearing last night um and it kind of inspired this class tonight we're going to talk about some other things as well, some more current and pressing issues as well. Uh, but I want to talk about that first. I think it's very important that we talk about this first. Okay? Because um, them brothers is out of their damn mind. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. Them brothers is out of their damn mind. All right? Out of their mind. So, um, I mean, okay, let's go here, let's go here, don't y'all forget though to like, share, like, sub, share, and super chat, like, sub, share, and super chat, brother for sure. Um, y'all remember though, y'all remember last night, so let's talk about it, let's talk about it, let's start here, this is, this is the main sound bite that I want to really talk about tonight, that's right, we know for a fact this happened to y'all with y'all families and stuff like that, that's right, so once you come and you accept the word, you receive the persecution, all right, where, so that means nothing in the Bible happened. I mean, it happened according to the story. But again, it's, it's, ir it's irrelevant to the whole thing. Do y'all understand? Because y'all talking about parables now. So, that's right. You want to talk about parables? Let's talk about parables. What does the temple represent? There's a reason why I asked this question. This question is a very important question. When guys want to talk about parables, mysteries, untying the knots for those of you who are familiar with that terminology and jargon of the scriptures it all goes back to a very distinctive formula right there's a formula that is within the scriptures there's an algorithm that is within the scriptures that assists you through the spirit of unlocking it or untying the knot that it is or the riddle or the parable or whatever Certainly things are parabolic in scripture. 
certainly think there are things that are not right and that there, there, there are things that are both right um so i asked this question to see where they were at in understanding the formula that one would need to employ to be able to untie these parables right and we're, we're going to see how they answer that i asked them what does the temple represent who represents your mind He said he sat there with all confidence and said that your temple represents your mind. It's one of the stupidest statements I've ever heard. And I'll elaborate as to why, but let's just play a little bit more of this. The temple represents your mind. Yes, sir. Who you are, what you put in it. All right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, Dick. Once I ask you that question and you answer it that way I understand you're not even on the level of understanding the parables like that in the Bible how to untie them and unlock them etc you have no idea you don't that's why you said something that's stupid quite frankly you don't know so what we want to do tonight through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is show y'all what the temple is and what it represents. He said the mind. Let's see what the mind. Here's the temple. This is how the temple looks from an aerial view. The temple pursuant to the measurements instructed to us by God in the Bible. It looks like this. Does this look familiar? Feet, legs, a body, ribs, arms, fingers, five fingers. See that? Uh, a face, eyes. A nose, <laughs> you see that? A vocal box, a throat, and a turban on his head. That's a person. Not a mind of a person, not your head. A whole body of a human being. That's what it's fashioned in the pattern of. So if, you, if I ask you what the temple is, and nigga, you tell me your mind, you're not even ready to have a conversation with me for real. Go ahead. You got a precept? Yeah, I got a couple. But, um, just first off, this is a uh, Sirach chapter 5, verse 12. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hands upon thy mouth. He clearly didn't know the answer. He, Why would you even say anything? Your mind, or what you put in it. You don't just put things in your mind. You put things in your whole body. <laughs> not just in your mind. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in some of this, in understanding this temple... In, in the allegories of it and the patterns of it and what it means, the lesson it's teaching, it's important. Um, but for you to, for him to just say what he said, that was ridiculous. The holy of holies is your mind. Yeah, yeah. You, because your mind is in control of the rest of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, of course, that's the holy of holies, but all of this is holy. This whole body, the same way your whole body is holy. The temple is your body. Your body is a temple. We know that. They say this in the world. Secularly, people call your body a temple. This is a fact, right? This is not a, a, a secret. There's not a question to that. Go ahead with other precepts. Um, I mean, sorry, you're probably going to get this. Maybe, maybe not the next few words. I mean, no, 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 you can get that. Time. This is John 2 and... Um, Matter of fact, hold that, yeah, though. Hold it. It's good, but I'm, I'm going to tell you when it hits. Do you have anything else? No, no, no. I'm All right. Cool. We're going to hit that in a second. That's, that's beautiful. Wow. Right. Um, so the temple represents our whole body. Your whole body is a temple. And the temple, the holy place of God, the Most High commanded, Yahweh commanded it to be built in a way that illustrates this point. This is what has to be understood, right? It illustrates this point. It does not go away from this point. Not just your mind. Your mind is the holy of holies. True. Um, this temple and understanding it and understanding the levels to it. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. The levels to it. The grave misunderstandings <clears throat> that our brothers displayed over the course of nearly three hours here on this situation. <coughs> Are a result of them not understanding the temple and what it teaches us. Okay? Period. 
So read Ezekiel 40 and 4. Chapter 40. I'm going to read louder than that. Come, so look at Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse 4. Uh -huh. It says, And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes. Uh -huh. Behold, look with your eyes, read. And hear with thine ears. Listen, go ahead. And set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. Put your mind, think about, remember, internalize everything I'm about to show you. Read. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee. What's this boy doing? One second. He's excited about this lesson. Of <clears throat> All right, my apologies. Oh, the audio is better now. Uh -huh. Um, let's start back from the top of Ezekiel forty and four. <clears throat> it's Ezekiel chapter forty verse four. And the man said, and the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes, uh -huh. and hear with thine ears, uh -huh. and set thine heart upon all that I shall show. So thee. think about <clears throat> and internalize everything that's getting ready to be shown to you. Read for to the intent uh -huh. that I might show them unto thee, art thou become hither. Uh -huh. are, sorry, are thou brought hither? Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. So this angel is telling the prophet Ezekiel, everything that you're about to see, make an open declaration to Israel. Okay? So if you read, we ain't gonna get all of it. Skip to 43 and 10. If you read in between Ezekiel 40 and 4, all the way to Ezekiel 43 and 10, He's giving in-depth measurements to the temple. It's all about building the temple. Okay? That's what it's about. So he says, listen and look and put it in your mind and declare it to Israel. Now read 43 and 10. Okay, it's Ezekiel 43 and 10. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel. Show this temple to Israel. Read. That they may be ashamed of their iniquities. That they what? May be ashamed of their iniquities. Here's my question. How is looking at a temple going to make people ashamed of their iniquities? Right? Go ahead. Uh, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities mm -hmm. and let them measure the pattern. And let them what? Measure the pattern. Measure the pattern. This is, this is important. Let them measure the pattern. That word measure goes back to this Hebrew word, Strong's H8505, Takan, right? And it says to regulate, measure, estimate, ponder, to ponder, or to test or prove, weigh in a balance, etc. So when you're weighing something, figuratively, what are you doing? If I say, oh, I got to weigh this out, you're thinking about it, you're pondering on it. So what the Most High is telling Ezekiel here is to Tell these measurements to Israel so that so they can think about it. Think about the message or the lesson that these measurements are teaching, right? And these measurements teach us a formula to decoding certain parts of Scripture. All of it, or a lot of it at least, does point to what? The laws. True. All of it necessarily doesn't. But what has to be understood in the point that I'm really getting to it is this. Uh, Ezekiel 42 and 6, read that. Uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 42 and verse 6. Uh -huh. It says, For they were in the three stories, so for, for they were in three stories, mm -hmm. but had not pillars as the pillars of the courts. Uh huh. They were in what? They were, it's like, for they were in three stories. Three stories. This temple that the Most High had us to make has three stories. Y'all see the visual aid here. Three stories. 
There's a reason for that. Three stories, three degrees, three levels. Why? Because it's, excuse my French ahead of time, but as our beloved brother Meek Mill said, it's levels to this shit. It's levels. It's levels to understanding the scriptures. It's levels to every scripture. A scripture is, and I, and I went into this, I remember, um, in the debate I had with Imam Bashir. Okay? And, 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 and there's, there's, there's things that escape people who are not grounded in scripture. So going back to the debate I had with Imam Bashir, what we have to understand is people who are not grounded for real in the scriptures, it, it, they just are not going to understand it. They're just not going to understand it, man. Um, and, and, and it's pretty clear. But there's levels to this. All right? There's various levels to this Bible and to understanding it that, like I said, just clearly go over people's heads. My apologies. So, getting back here, people just don't understand it. They don't understand the levels because they haven't truthfully got into the book enough. Therein lies the clear problem. I just don't get it. This Bible is, number one, it's condensing. It's condensing a lot of information, right? That's the point of understanding the layers to it. The fact that a lot of information is being condensed, right? But understanding the fact that there needs to be layers, and my, my, my number one example would be, get Genesis 3 and 19. This is my number one example for showing you that there are multiple stories that are being told. These brothers want to marginalize it into everything being a parable. I don't take away from the parabolic meaning of any scripture. But there being a parabolic meaning does not negate something actually happening. It's just no way. It doesn't work like that. But somebody who doesn't understand the temple and that we're, we're told to be taught the measurements of the temple and that once we understand the measurements and we ponder the measurements, it will make us ashamed of our iniquities. We understand that there is a lesson being taught to us with the temple and the way it's being constructed. Period. Right? So once we understand these things, it helps us to understand the scriptures. So understanding that there's three levels to a temple, to this temple, a lot of scriptures have three applications or three levels of understanding that come with it. And Genesis 3 and 19 is my favorite scripture to demonstrate this. 
So let's go to Genesis 3 and 19. Genesis 3 and 19. In the sweat of thy face. In the sweat of thy face. Read. Shalt thou eat bread. In the sweat of your face shalt you eat bread. Do men have to work to eat? Yes, they do. By the sweat of thy face does a man eat bread. This is an undeniable fact. From sea to shining sea, around the whole earth, whether you call it a globe or a plane, man got to earn his bread off the sweat of his face. Right? This is a fact. But also, we know the Bible is called our daily bread, the bread of God, the bread of life. Right? We earn this by the sweat of our face too because we have to go and study it to understand it. Right? So those are two very clear and very practical applications to that one scripture that everybody bears witness to. One does not negate the other. Period. Go ahead. Also, um, I believe it's Hosea 11 and 1 where it says you call the son out of Egypt. He references that to Yahweh Shai and, and the nation. Well, well, of course. But that's the that's that's going too deep because somebody can argue that that's only the Israel. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So that's why, that's why Genesis 3 and 19 is perfect. Nobody can dispute whether or not somebody has to earn their bread by the sweat of their face or whether somebody has to study to understand the scripture. Both things are universal truths. So both aspects are applicable to that one scripture. One is the literal reference to it. Then we peel back. We go to the next degree, the next story, the next layer. And we begin to understand the parabolic nature of that scripture. So there is an initial, a physical aspect of the scripture. Then there's a parabolic aspect of the scripture. Right? The temple itself being three stories. The first story represents it's the temple. Literally. No mystique to it. But then the next represents the body of Yahweh. But then the next, the third level represents what? The nation of Israel. You see that? It's very interesting when you think about it. And let's prove it. Get that in John 2. This is John chapter 2, verse 19. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Yahweh Shai was destroyed, rose on the third day. He was crucified, rose the third day. Finish that. Con. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. Forty six years, go ahead. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? And will you rear it up in three days? Read on. But he spake of the temple of his body. Of what? Of his body. Of his body. So he was talking about his body. I'll raise his mug up in three days. Come. Right? Guess what? The actual temple will also be raised up in three days. You see that? So in three literal days, his temple, his body, was crucified and rose. In three days, that same temple is going to raise back up. Why? Go ahead. Come on, this is a. Uh, well, do you want that? Or is there mm -hmm. No, I want First Peter. Okay. This is First Peter chapter three verse eight. Uh huh. Come on. No, no, no. Second Peter. Three. Second Peter three and eight. So. This is a uh, Second Peter chapter three verse eight. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Of this one thing, what? That one day uh -huh. is with the Lord as a thousand years, and as a thousand years as one day. You see that? We're in the third day now. Yeah. Waiting for the temple to get rose up. You see that? Meaning the temple will literally be built, but the temple also represents the nation of Israel. <laughs> you want to know why the temple represents the nation of Israel? You know what? Let me show you. Let's show you. Let's show you. Hmm. Let's show you. Give me that, the, the, the cornerstone too. The, the corner. Yeah, I wish I'd be in the cornerstone. Certainly, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this. Matter of fact, holy hoes. Let's go ahead. Holy bless. Now, watch this. No, no, no. Well, it's going to say that, but I, I, I need the measurements. Need the measurements. Yeah, I just need to get the measurements briefly. 
right here, 16, right here. 6 and 16. First Kings 6 and 16, it says, And he built 20 cubits on the sides of the house, both the floor and the walls with the boards of cedar, and even built them for it within, even for the oracle, even for the most holy place. So that's the Holy of Holies. So the Holy of Holies is 20 cubits. Keep that in mind. Right? So watch this. Not found. Hold on. So the Holy of Holies. Let me see. Where is this measurement at? I'm tripping. This will never be 60. It's three square cubits, which is 60. Now, here in first, same chapter, it says, In the house which King Solomon built for Yahweh, the length thereof was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, right? So, if the whole temple is three score, which is sixty cubits, but the Holy of Holies is twenty cubits, what measurement does that make the Holy of Holies of the whole temple? One third. So the Holy of Holy, that whole temple is holy. All of Israel is holy, but the Holy of the Holies of Israel is who? The elect, the one-third. You notice that? So this is how we know the temple also represents all of Israel. So again, it physically is a temple. It's a place where people can go. Then it represents the body of Hamashiach, Yahweh Then it represents Israel as a whole. These are the layers of understanding. But if you don't realize that, then you'll read something or you'll... you'll get an inclination of uh, of unti the untying of a knot or the decoding of something and you'll think oh that's just a parable not understanding that yes it's a parable <laughs> it's also literal and it also could have an even deeper parabolic meaning to it but if you're not familiar with this if you're not understanding this and you don't know anything about this then of course your dumb ass is going to say oh none of it ever really happened none of it's real and it's all a parable and God is the law, and Jesus is the law, and the flesh is the law, and the blood is the law, and the spirit is the law, and the water is the law, and, and everything's the law, and the law made the law, and the law made everything. But I saw the, the uh, at the onset, I saw the issue. The issue is you don't know about this. You have no clue about any of this. So it all made sense at that point. Oh, this nigga don't know that. He's crazy. You don't understand. Right? And here's the point of, of a, of a temple. Number one. Okay. So. Your body being a temple is important because. Let's take a look at this. If you join something, they call it member. You, you become a member. You gain membership, right? What is a member? A body part. You are a part of a body. That's important to understand. Oh, yeah. And then the point that these guys try to make about them not... If, if he would have understood this, I mean, it, it, there were so many mistakes that the brother made. Number one, he tries to negate sacrifice with going to the scriptures. The most I would rather obedience to sacrifice, you're right. If you knew this temple, you wouldn't know how to better explain that. You know why? Because here is an altar, and here is an altar. This is an altar of sacrifice where you kill animals' blood. This is an altar of incense. This is made of brass. Shittim wood overlaid in brass. This is made of gold. Shittim wood overlaid in gold. This brass is an inferior metal to gold. Gold is better than brass, right? So you have incense, and then they light the incense, offer it here on the altar, and the smoke bellows up into the Holy of Holies. This is important. But all the way at the feet, this is represents your, your vocal box. Why does it represent your vocal box? Because the prayers of the elect are likened unto incense. That revel get that Revelation 5. But your Revelation 5. Guys don't understand this stuff. And truthfully, this stuff is really not all that complicated. But it's so concealed from people that a lot of people don't know about it. And that's what leads to these silly mistakes like the, the doctrine that the brother was spewing yesterday. Right? So read that. Um, let's see. Split. This is uh, Revelation chapter 5. Was that like 8? Um, 
Com. It says, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, uh -huh. having every one of them harps and golden vials mm -hmm. full of odors, mm -hmm. which are the prayers of the saints. So the golden vials full of odors, which is incense, is the prayers of the saints. So literally, your prayers are likened unto incense, right? In the incense altar is made of a better metal, and it's further in the temple, and the smoke of it descends directly into the Holy of Holies. So when you your vocal box, you vocalize your prayers. You see that? That's what this is representing. And so, so yes, a repentant spirit is superior to blood of goats and rams, etc., and animal sacrifice. Certainly, it is. Understanding the temple will make you to understand that. Yeah, read that. Read that. Matter of fact, this is First Kings six and twenty, and the oracle in the fore part, right, which is the holy of holies. The oracle in the fore part, read on, was twenty cubits in length. That's right, meaning one third of the whole temple, which represents Israel, the holy of holies of Israel. Read, and twenty cubits in breadth, mm -hmm. and twenty cubits in the height thereof. Uh huh. And he overlaid it with pure gold. Uh huh. And so covered the altar, which was of cedar. That's right, with pure gold. So now watch this. The oracle. The Holy of Holies is also called the oracle. Right? It's Dabayar here in the Hebrew. Now watch this. It goes back to this word. Dabar, which means to speak, declare, converse, command, promise, warn. Right? So to speak. Who is the mouthpiece of the Lord? The prophets who are what? The elect. The, the one third. So literally... The word for the oracle, because the oracles of God are the ones who are coming to speak on his behalf, are that one third, the prophets on the streets. That's what all that represents. But if you don't understand this, you're lost when you're trying to go deep and deal with the parables of this Bible. You're totally lost. That's what these unfortunate brothers were, these very mistaken brothers were last night. Lost. The, let's get them here. These guys, lost. Because they don't understand this. <laughs> it's a very simple formula that makes understanding what the Most High God is teaching us very simple. If you just apply the formula of the measurements of the temple as spoken about in Ezekiel in the 40s, for, for 40th chapter, 42nd to 43rd chapter, etc. A lot of these guys never even read Ezekiel 40 to the end. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed niggas avoid that like the plague. Because they don't know what's going on. I once did it. I'm like, well, I don't know what the hell this is about. See, but through the spirit, it was opened up and everything became very simple because a simple formula is being laid there to show you what all of this means. <laughs> and you see it, it's all throughout the scriptures. It's in Revelation, it's all over the Bible. But it's, it's, it's a formula that you apply to understanding what's going on. So I understand that the temple represents itself literally Yahweh Shai and Israel give me the chief cornerstone because on the level of all of Israel Yahweh Shai that's why he's the cornerstone he's the stone that all of Israel is built upon right so let's get that this is Psalm chapter 118 verse 22 mm -hmm. the stone which the builders refused is the stone which the builders refused read on Come. it's become the headstone mm -hmm. of the corner has become the headstone of the corner. Yahweh Shai is the cornerstone that Israel is built upon, right? Now it said a stone that the builders refused. That's also important. Let's let's deal with that. Let's deal with what it means to build the stone. Might as well um, go into it briefly. Give me, um, let me see something. One second. Is this what I want? Ephesians 4, let's start here, Ephesians 4 and 12. God, this is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. Mm -hmm. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, 
for the work of the ministry. It says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Read on. For the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. The edifying of the body of Hamashiach. The edifying of a body. Key words. Edifying body. Skip to 16. Verse 16. It says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth mm. according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. The, read it again. Sorry. Sorry. This is <coughs> Ephesians 4 and 16. Uh -huh. From whom the whole body fitly joined together. Whole body fitly joined together. Read. And compacted by that which every joint supplieth uh -huh. according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. The measure... Of every part, read. Make an increase uh, of the body uh -huh. unto the edifying of itself in love. Uh, unto the edifying of itself. The body edifies itself. The body is teaching itself. It's teaching things. So this temple represents that it teaches us things in its measurements and all of its members fitly framed and working together. But also, it represents us. <clears throat> One level of it represents Israel, right? We teach each other. We edify each other. The body edifies itself. Point is edifying. Let's go to Strong's G. Is it here? 3619. It's the word for edifying. It means building, build up, edifying, edification. The act of one who promotes another's growth in Christian wisdom, piety, uh, happiness, holiness, a building. Uh, the thing or edifice see what the temple is is a building or an edifice how does a building or an edifice come into existence it must be built or edified right so all of this is teaching us about ourselves and how we come together and learn the scriptures and teach one another etc <laughs> that's what it is but it, and it's very simple does this take away from the fact that there was an actual temple? I mean, we could see that there was an actual temple. It's there. It's in Telerod right now. Historians attest to the lives and times of the individuals who wrote these scriptures and these scriptures are about right now. So none of the allegorical or parabolic deeper lesson that's being taught in the layers of scriptures negates any literal historical event from happening. They both all go together. Because my nigga, there's levels to this. Right. <laughs> it's that simple. It, but 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 uh, somebody who doesn't know any of this, they read it and say, oh, it's all nothing ever. God is the law and Christ is the law. And the law was sitting at the right hand side of the law. And the law is the law. And the law has thoughts of the law. It, that was some of the dumbest stuff I ever heard in my life last night. Let me let me get this strong. 884. 51. We're going to get right there in a second. Uh, now, oh, Salaki, I'm jumping the gun. Jumping the gun. Came in here with a loaded gun. Let's go here. And I'm online. And let's go to the word edify. Edify. To build or construct. <gasps> That's what the word means. To build, install, teach, instruct. Right? Construct, instruct. That's what edify means. What does Torah mean? Law, direction, instruction. Instructions on how to build <laughs> yourself. Yeah. That's what the law is. So all of this is encoded within the scriptures. And nothing takes away from the other thing. But if you don't understand all the levels to this, you're, you're going to miss one of the levels and you're going to miss the message. The fact that what Yahweh Shah did has parabolic meaning and, and, and connotation does not take away from the fact that he was a man that lived and crucified, suffered, died, was buried and rose the third day. Why? Because the scriptures talk about it. And history talks about it. There's no way around it. Um, so that certainly needs to be thoroughly understood. Um, and it, unfortunately, it's not. Um, by by the brothers who we dealt with. Let's let's go here. I'll see the twenty eight. What you got? Read your precept. God, this is uh, Hebrews five twelve to fourteen. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, 
ye have need that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk mm -hmm. and not of strong meat. You're not even ready to come and go here. Yeah. You know, but real quick, before I even jumped the gun, I was going to the point of Yahweh being the stone that the builders refused. As teachers of Torah, they were the builders of that time, the Pharisees, etc. They were supposed to be scholars and doctors in the law. So in them refusing him, rejecting him, they are the builders. They refused him as the stone that he they were supposed to be building. Because matter of fact, before I even go here, let's go to let's go to this. Give me Isaiah 51 and 1, it says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Yahweh, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Every individual one of us is looked at as a rock that has to be hewn, right? Let's just look at a rock. What's the matter of fact? Hold on. Hold, hold it. I want to look at this quarry. Where is the scripture in Ecclesiastes? I need it. 10 and 1? Okay. 10 and 10. Okay. I want to look at a quarry real quick. Let's take a look at how a quarry works. Briefly. So, as we look here at these quarries, right, and if y'all are familiar with what happens at a, at a rock quarry, but what happens is, you know, they had this pit here, and they dig rocks up out of here. They got to hew these rocks, you know, and, and then these rocks, you know, when, when you find it, it's just a block. Just the same way as like a precious, um, these precious stones, right, like of an E5. The precious stones of the ephod. What you have to understand about an ephod is this. These stones, they don't come like this. They don't. Um, a lot of these things, name one of the, what's one of the stones on the ephod? Emerald. The emerald, right? An emerald. I think it's Judah stone. Let's go to the emerald, right? An emerald on Cut emerald. Not to see, look. Something like that. Uncut. So this is like the uncut emerald and what it looks like. As we can see here, far from what we just saw, this is that uncut emerald. So it comes like this, right? And this symbolizes all of us when we come into the truth. This is you. This is you in the world. Here, here you are. You're like the diamond in the dirt, right? Then you get hewn, 
right? And this, and then you become this marvelous, magnificent. I didn't mean to click on that. Y'all get the picture. You become this. It's a beautiful emerald, but you see how rough she was looking before, right? Emerald rough. You go from. Come on, man. This is wild. You go from this. To this you see what I'm saying so the, and you do that through the law through, through learning the law certainly um but these are the various layers to it and I just I just kind of wanted to touch on it because it's, it's something I haven't touched on in a while um but it's it's important to understand and it, and it shouldn't be neglected and understanding these types of things that if more people were teaching this at least pushing it out here and there it may stop people from walking off of this deep end and bugging out on this wild doctrine like our sadly mistaken brothers last night have right but uh officer Assad precept uh, just quick going into back into the building and us being uh, um likened unto uh look the stones yeah the stones get quarried and that's how you because you have to remember Right, if 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 Yahweh is a stone that the builders refuse, right, and we are the stones that make up the, the 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 temple, as the nation, holy of holy, the one third being, um, being the elect, what have you, a stone. The whole reason I brought up it being quarried is because when you find a stone, it's not, it can't, you can't use it and make a structure with it. It's got to be hewn. All that. Excess got to get cut off it, and that's what the law does to you. Yeah, so that's why it's important to understand these things, okay. right? But go ahead. This is Second Ezra 13, and um, I'm gonna just get to the point. Verse 36. And when you go into it, this is talking about all the nations fighting against Yahushai. But here's the point. Verse 36. And Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and builded, like mm. like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. Mm. Prepared and builded. So, until we get edified s properly and substantially, we are not going to be shown to the nation. You see what I'm saying? So, it says prepared and build it. And, and how we are to be prepared and build it is parabolically taught to us through the literal measurements of the actual physical temple that are laid out in Scripture. <laughs> One does not negate the other. Both work cohesively to teach us a lesson. And the third layer of understanding what the temple is, is the body of Yahweh Shai. So what you have to understand is everything that is, is true of the temple, is true of Yahweh Shai, is true of the nation of Israel. All the three things. Again, there was an actual temple, there was a man named Jesus, and there is a nation of Israel. Huh. <laughs> they all, and they all foreshadow one another. One does not negate the other. One is not not real because there's a parable. That's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's intellectually irresponsible to conclude any of that. Okay. How is the law going to be the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the flesh, the blood, the water? None of us know. There's not even a point in trying to understand at this point. They don't even no man from you know Adam seed to sin. I read that. Well, I read that. Well, it, nah, man, can't nobody from Adam seed sin. That's how stupid. <sighs> Come on, y'all. But again, it's important to understand that there's levels and layers to understand the scripture. Okay. <laughs> So you'll see things that have parabolic meaning. It does not take away from them actually happening. It doesn't. That's what you have to understand. And that, that's the main thing that I want to illustrate tonight is that something having a parabolic or symbolic meaning does not take away from it literally happening. Because there's levels. It's that simple. Other precepts? Um, nah, that's, that's it for the stone. We got the paragraph. I think the point is clear. I hope y'all was edified on that point. 
Moving on. To some other points here. We'll open for questions as well. A little bit after this. Headlines. This is via the of uh, the voice of St. Lucia. And it reads New Dallas District Attorney says appropriate charge for Botham Jones killer is murder. Yes, we're still covering the both Botham Shim John murder. Um, y'all know we was there from day one at the crime scene. And uh, you know, this brother's ever in our thoughts. You know, and we've been paying close attention to the case. This is the newest development in the case. You know, it's been kind of quiet. It was election time. What happened is that Coon, Faith Johnson, lost an election to a brother who alleges he plans to right her wrongs. Okay, it says on, on September 6th, 30 year old police officer Amber Geiger killed 26 year old Botham Shimjon in his home, in his own home, rather. She was charged with manslaughter, and there has been outrage over District Attorney Faith Johnson, who is a black Republican woman, handled the case. We certainly voiced our outrage, both at the crime scene and in front of Dallas Police Headquarters through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Moving on, though. On Tuesday, Johnson lost her re-election to retired judge John Cruznot, who is a black Democrat, and he seems ready to do the, do the job Johnson did not do. District Attorney-elect Cruznot told NBC in Dallas, I don't know any police reports, I don't know any forensic reports, but based on what I have seen, manslaughter is an inappropriate charge. Same thing we've been saying, right? And many others. Based on the circumstances as I understand them. Once I get in there and I get everything in front of me and it appears the most appropriate charge is murder, then that's the charge we will go forward with. He also said anything less than murder deviates from Dallas County precedent. It's also it's what we said. It's what we've been saying as well as others through the spirit. Um, as we know, you know, when, when somebody gets elected, there's a period of time, I believe, you know, probably j sometime in January, mid to late January, he'll probably, um, you know, take his seat. Which, which of course, I'm sure that, that Amber don't want to go to trial right now. If they attempted to speed it up, that would be crazy. That would be really crazy. Oh, uh, uh, like it. But it says, um, back in early October, Faith Johnson, who had been dealing with backlash for months, said only said, only thing I'm saying to the Dallas County, to the people of Dallas County, trust me, we are planning to go before this grand jury as soon as we can. In fact, we're trying to expedite it to get it even quicker than we probably should. But we're not going to compromise anything. That is what is so critical. We don't want to compromise any evidence that we think is going to be critical for them to make the right decision in this case. Johnson lost to Cruz not by over 20 points, meaning it was over. And, and part of the reason many speculated that she was she even charged her with manslaughter is because she was trying to get more white votes by not being tougher on the killer cop of a black man. We see how that backfired on this coon sellout. Cop. D.A. Kunisha. That's right. As well as Chief Kunisha down there at the Dallas PD. Um, and it says... Uh, there have been countless mistakes made in this case, uh, from never searching Geiger's apartment to claiming both of Jean was a pothead to protesters in jail longer than Geiger was. Now with Cruz not in office, there will hopefully be less. So, of course, we're going to keep an attentive eye and ear on all the developments in this case as we have been through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And we'll see what happens, but I believe, again, he won't take office until January, so we probably won't have... But, you know, it probably won't have any progress uh, until the next couple months. But again, like I said, we're going to keep our eyes peeled on this. Uh, precepts on this? Yeah. Um, real quick, this is Jeremiah 23 and 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith Yahweh? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith Yahweh? So, I mean, that's... Like these crackers trying to hide, you know what I mean? Not just try to hide the evidence, but you got this devil, Amber Geiger. I'm surprised. Where Where is she? I wonder what she's doing right now. Thinking she can just hide and, and just, you know, well, in Dallas, of course, you can just blend in. But nothing as it is written. Nothing that is, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to get that. Not, all things are going to be made manifest. Um, there's nothing secret. Because the truth is going to come out. Whether 
whether the Dallas Police Department brings justice or the Most High ultimately will have to. There's there's going to be justice. Um, justice will prevail. And like I said, if it ain't the Dallas Police Department, the Most High will bring justice. But this is um, um, Luke 8 and 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So that's what's going to happen. The Most High is going to destroy Amber Geiger, ultimately. That's right. Wow, some of my shit I was shot, man. Um, we'll go to the next, the next thing here. Um, via the root, and um, look at this, look at this title. How many black bitches does a woman have to be called while being stabbed, uh, for it to be a hate crime? This happened here at church, and this is what's crazy, right? Uh, y'all know we did our New York trip. We literally stayed right here. We every night, we was in every day we was hopping on the train at this stop right here. We was literally stay, right here. Everybody that was there, who's in the chat that was there? Ayash is in the chat. Uh, he should be. Ayash, Rakab, the Bak, the Kamaya, the Tazama, the God, Nak Nakawam. We was all at this at this subway station. Every day, and this is where this happened, which is crazy. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing I never saw at at, at, at the Church Ave subway station. You know what that is? White a white person. Yeah, so I was about to ask, what what borough is this in? This is in Flatbush. This is in Brooklyn. This is in Flatbush. <laughs> There's a Haitian restaurant across the street. There's a bodega on the corner. I mean, I remember us getting off gangbangers and Haitians and Jamaicans everywhere. Not no white folks around here at all. That was like, I, I, I didn't see any. You know what I'm saying? So, um, this is very interesting. See, look, this is what's across the street. You got the Chinese spot. They got another view. I mean, like, literally, like, we was right here. Who's in the chat? Who, you Ayash, watching the Ayash. chat? Ayash. Ayash. Ayash, was we right here? <laughs> Ayash, we was right here. This is, we was getting off. What was this? Uh, uh, I think the Q coming, you know, coming from from um, you know, from Manhattan. This is madness. This is utter, utter madness. I really can't believe that this was able to happen here. Where was everybody at? Let's get into this. Um, <clears throat> it says a black woman was brutally attacked by a white man on a Brooklyn subway platform Friday night. And he reportedly called her a black bitch over and over again as he did it. So why is it that both the police and larger legacy media outlets are hesitant to label the crime as what it is, a racist hate crime? Family members told the local NBC News station in New York that 57-year-old Amory, so what's that? Oh, oh, sister. Amory Washington, a Trinidad native, a mother of two, was on her way home from work when she exited the subway at the Church Avenue stop. The unidentified white male reportedly attacked her. I mean, how hard is it to find a white boy in Flatbush? That should be quite, you know, quite simple to find, right? The unidentified white male reportedly attacked her as she exited the train, punching her repeatedly in the face and stabbing her, calling her a black bitch as he did so. The man then fled on another train. The victim did not even realized she had been stabbed until she got home. She was hospitalized Sunday and had surgery for a collapsed lung. Washington described her attacker as a white male in his early 30s, about five feet three inches tall. Five feet, some little dwarf devils. Yeah. The, the leprechaun and I, I, I'm just. The, the, what happened to this cracker? Did he say he was able to flee out of there? What, where? This, you, where are you niggas at? Where are you brothers? How come y'all didn't defend this elderly sister, man? Y'all are so damn weak. Y'all let this cracker come in your neighborhood, beat up one of y'all sisters, and get the hell away with it. That's why. That's why he feels so emboldened to do stuff like that, cause he knows you niggas gonna let him get away with it. That's true. That's a good point. Five foot three. I wish I'd see a five three cracker try to do something do, to any of my do, people. Doing anything to anyone. God, I, <laughs> imagine that. I, imagine what would happen if this happened in Chinatown. Imagine a white boy going to Chinatown trying to pick they on beat the hell out They of beat them. the dog piss out of them and feed them to the dogs. Any other people you try this to, they would serve that crack of justice. But y'all, Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, y'all won't serve. Y'all don't even. What's wrong with y'all? 
Y'all love this white. Oh, of course. Well, God's God's hitting her. What are we gonna do? I mean, it's God hitting her, right? Five foot three leprechaun, like the brother said. Y'all let the five foot three. Y'all let damn leprechaun beat your sister up right in front of you, and then he had, he lived to tell the story. The white man is the devil, and you Negroes are of your father the devil because you ain't do a damn thing about it. It's unbelievable. That's the most unbelievable part. Of the, and one, I'm not going to say the most unbelievable. That's one of the most unbelievable parts of this story is that this dude is still alive. Or there's, there wasn't, nobody stopped him or, or there was no retaliation in any form. Y'all just literally sat there and watched. And I know them subways, I ain't been on the New York subway, but they're jam-packed. There's lots of people on it, I'm assuming, right? Well, it depends on what time of day. Because going there in the morning, like when we was going there in the mornings, it'd be empty. But during the day, it'd be packed. Well, after after work, it would be, I'm supposed to. When did this happen? Let's take a look at when this happened. What was the time? What was the time? Did he have a time? You should say it said after work. I mean, I guess maybe after five, I guess you could. I mean, you know, people get off work at different times. Uh, On the way home. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what time this was. But yeah, early in the morning. It depends. Too, if it was a Sunday morning, then, um, you know, it it, it could have been dead. But if it was Sunday during the day, uh, nah. Because that was the last day. I remember that. Ayash, you were the comic boy. You remember it was cracking Sunday midday. Remember before, because we didn't get on the subway that day. We ended up getting the Ubers because we w- went to Notion and Fulton. But go ahead. This is Ecclesiastes 5 and 8. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in the province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Yeah, the most high God is, is going to do something about this. That's right. Get stand against our neighbor's blood. Yep, yep, that's, yep, yep. Hold on, let me go up. Um. Go ahead. This is Leviticus 19 and 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am your house. You, you shall not stand against the blood of your neighbor. Look at that boy, man. He's excited about tonight. You shall not stand against the blood of your neighbor. Meaning when you see somebody violently attacking one of your own people... You, you can't just stand by idly and do nothing about it. That's in the law. It is a commandment of God to not let somebody just do something to one of your people. To stand against that blood. If somebody's stabbing them, trying to kill you're not allowed, according to Torah, to just do nothing. This is why we need these laws, statutes, and commandments so desperately in our communities. Because you, it li- literally tells you, you can't just... Sit by idly and watch that. Right? Go ahead. This is Acts 7 and 23. And when he was full 40 years old, talking about Moses, it came into his heart to visit his brethren and children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. And why do you think God was with him from that point? The Most High Yahweh was with him and chose him. You know why? Because the law was already in that, brother. Our great forefather, ancestor Moses, the Torah was already in that powerful man from the tribe of Levi to where he, it was, he was compelled, he was enraged at that moment. No, I will not allow the blood of my brother to be shed, of my neighbor to be shed. I will not stand against it this day. It won't happen. Right? And and also that goes real quick too. Sidebar, y'all. Going back to that lesson about levels, right? Levels to this. Um, so like, I'm not even, I'm not even going with it because it, that's really off topic. But you know, I say that for another time. But the fact is, the law says you cannot stand against your your uh, your neighbor's blood. You can't do it. It's a sin. So whoever, whatever black Hispanic Native Indian saw that happening, if anybody witnessed that happening, you sinned yeah, yeah. by not doing anything to defend. That elderly mother in Israel. Right? Go ahead. Okay.
Go ahead. Uh, this is Psalm 82, and uh, let me see what I'm going to say. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Um, I think that King James does a fine job. Okay. Psalm 82 and 2. It says, How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? That's what y'all did. Y'all accepted the person of the wicked, but let's keep going. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. You didn't do that. You accepted the person of the wicked. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. You did not do that. Y'all brothers, I was on that train, and guess what? Y'all, it was in Flatbush, you said? Mm. That's probably a lot of Levites on that train, potentially. Mm. And the Levites and you, are you should be so ashamed of yourself. You should be so damn ashamed of yourself. Yeah, well, we got on, we got on that train on that Saturday... Edify the whole Levi family. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just Levi and Benjamin predominantly in those areas. You'll get some Judah and Ephraim as well, but it's just predominantly, you know, so called West Indians and Haitians. That's it. Yeah, y'all made me want to vomit, man. Straight up. That's disgusting. How dare y'all? Filthy. Filthy as hell. Let's it's more. It's more on this though. It's more on this. Um oh it's a brother. Shout out to the brother of Mo H O I pull up boys. Uh were out there last night uh bringing out the word. And standing up for their sister, not too many masculine brothers coming out of that train station, man. That's the and, and and that's horrible, man. That that's that's horrible, and that's deplorable because, like like I said, man, how 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 I am I wala? How in the hell do a white boy get away with beating and stabbing somebody grandma, nigga, at Church Avenue? I need to understand how this happened, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. What's happened to Brooklyn, man? <laughs> I don't ever want to hear about no brothers from Brooklyn. Don't ever, you know, oh, that was no rock happened in Brooklyn. Yes, it did. It yeah, nigga, it happened. It Brooklyn. happened. Right. Yeah, yeah, what happened, man? This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> let's listen, man. Once it, listen, you, if, once it happens in Harlem, listen, if it happens in Harlem, just forget about and it. Just, just, just let it go. <laughs> man, um, uh, it says, uh, and while brutal and senseless attack is horrible enough, what makes it even more egregious is the fact that NYPD did not initially consider it as a hate attack, despite the witness description and video of what the man said as he attacked. There's a I video. Seen, matter of fact, I've seen this. Where the video? I've seen the man? video. Where the video? I've seen it, bro. I, I'm telling you, this got to be the same video. I know it is. I just couldn't believe that was Brooklyn, New York. I thought that was. That's crazy. Let me try to find it. I'm pretty sure I've seen this video. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to find it. Um, I'm trying to hear. I need this video. Yeah, I've seen it before. I know exactly. I, I knew as soon as you started reading the article, I was like, wait a minute. This rings a bell. And yeah, 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 I'm gonna find it. They said this nigga may have used the ice pick. <sighs> Looking like any devil. Okay, so we got witnesses. Coming up from the on the train, and this white man saw her, kind of punching her on her face because she was black. Okay, as a witness approached the attacker, so somebody tried to approach me, fled into the Q train, then she alerted an MCA employee and asked to stop the train. Now they're not stopping that goddamn train. I'll tell you that now. The police were called, but the train wasn't stopped. So I guess this is right after. 
This is the sister. This must be immediately investigated as a hate crime. It cannot be investigated uh, merely as some form of assault, and this person needs to be charged with attempted homicide because he stabbed her in her back. Stabbed her in the back with an ice pick. That'll kill a nigga, especially the collapse lung. I know a lot of niggas that they got, especially in Brooklyn, an ice pick in Brooklyn is almost a guaranteed collapse lung. Remember niggas used to get hit I'm on Wala. Tell me I'm wrong. Niggas used to get hit in that armpit with that ice pick. That's that lung is gonna collapse and you can kill a nigga that way. Right? She wants justice for our mother. She should not have to be attacked. She's a hardworking woman. We want justice. We want that guy caught and off the street. This is a mother who was assaulted for no other reason but based on what we hear because of our ethnicity. That is unacceptable in this community as extremely diverse as it is. She was a young white male in his late 30s, early 40s, perhaps. Um, clean, clean shaven, dressed clean and everything. He, yeah, that's all I know. She look, I'm telling you, we was literally <laughs> right here. <laughs> so he so she's telling you and this is an Ephraimite sister right she's telling you I mean all of us is brown over here so he was coming over here to randomly attack the first so called black or Hispanic Esau it's clear to us the hatred that's coming from Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington D.C. has found its way on Washington Avenue and Church Avenue here in the heart of Brooklyn we are not going to allow that to happen I've never had a sense of no here's a, you know we're expecting the NYPD to keep somebody safe and and th these are the same guys that you know are, are the most infamously brutal most infamously murderous uh, the stop and friskers th th this is the same organization we're talking about what do we expect them to really do for us as blacks and Hispanics yeah. Yeah. Impossible to do. Can't even believe it. Let's keep, let's keep going. Um. Uh, Imani Henry of Equality for Flatbush said at a news conference Sunday, if this was a white resident, a new gentrifier to this neighborhood, there would be swarms of cops here, which is an indisputable fact. But when it was a black person who was attacked by a white racist, there isn't anything. NYPD has since said its hate crimes task force would look into the attack. The department told NBC it did not have all the details about the crime at the time it was reported, but even larger media reporting on the incident has referred to the attacker's comments as racially charged rather than calling them out for what they were plain old racism. That's what it was, clearly a racially charged hate crime racist hate crime right but see they always protect white perpetrators white criminals always never fails especially when the victim is black or Hispanic this was obviously a racially motivated attack and to treat it as anything other than that does not does a disservice rather to Washington and black people as a whole Every time a black person suffers something like this, the media scrambles for softer 
uh, euphemisms to uh, to use it to to you to describe it. Enough of that BS, as it says. How many black bitches does a woman have to be called while being stabbed for it to be a hate crime? I oh, wait. Brilliantly written article by Sister Monique Judge. Um, tremendous questions being posed here. Valid questions being posed here. Uh, any precepts, officer? Yeah. This is uh, Psalm 73 and uh, 8. It says, um, They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They are corrupt and they speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. It's what they do. It's who they are. It's how they operate. They consistently downplay anything that has to do with us. It's what they do. Period. It's what they do. It's not a secret. It's it's not new. Uh, uh, it's it's. Uh, do I want to say is it's it, it, it's it's surprising, but it's not. Because it's, it's just they get out. It's their mo. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 4 and 1 in the NLT. It says, Again, I observed all the oppression that takes place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed with no one to comfort them. No one. There's no one there. Here her son is. Here her daughter is. She's laid up in a hospital bed. There's no one to comfort her. Mm -hmm. Right, read on. The oppressors have great power. Mm -hmm. Ooh. The oppressors have what? Great power. Go ahead. And their victims are helpless. The, the oppressors have great power and their, uh, their, their victims are helpless. This white man knows he can do virtually anything to a black, Hispanic, or native Indian, and there's just nothing that's really going to happen to him for it. He knows that. They target us. They target us to be victims of all the crimes and all of their sick passions, whether it be assault, whether it be murder, whether it be sexual perversion, all of it is used, they target us for all of it because they look at us like we're helpless and they have great power. And that's why God, and going back to the earlier precept that you pulled, officer, the most high God in heaven sees all of this. Yahweh sees all of this. And he's going to send Yahweh Shai as a big, angry black man to this earth to return to this earth with a vengeance in his heart and avenge all the death and all the oppression and all the hell that we've had to endure under this satanic regime of Esau. Go ahead. Isaiah 63 and 5. And I looked and there was none to help. I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me. That's right. Yahweh Shai is going and bring us that salvation. It's literally that simple. Uh, the brother in my wallet said he, he wouldn't hit a young man like that. He damn sure wouldn't. Sure. But he would hit a 57-year-old woman. The white man is a coward. Con. He's a he's always been a coward. He's never been anything short of a coward. That's right. That's why he didn't really rise again into power until, you know, the advent of, you know, projectile weaponry. That's right. I.e. the pistol. You see what I'm saying? He got up close and personal and ice picked a 57-year-old woman. <laughs> Not a difficult task for any fully functioning grown man. Yeah. Nothing difficult about that. Yeah. And, and that just shows you how inferior the so called white man is. That's because right. Because here it is a man, you shouldn't even, first of all, if you're a, a grown ass man, even if you're if you're 10 years old, you should be able to handle a woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, just that, that alone. But you had to then use a weapon on an elderly woman. You're a grown ass man using a weapon on an elderly woman. The white man is a coward, like the chief priest said. He's a homosexual, and he's you know he's the devil that the Bible speaks. That's of. right. Plain and simple. Table of King Shalom. This is crazy, though, bro. I have all, out of all places in America, I never thought Flatbush were a ton of Flatbush. That's insanity. That's sick, man. That just lets you know how how wicked the society is getting, and how Donald Trump. I, listen, I, I support Donald Trump in the sense that he's really bringing out the devil out these crackers. That's right. Because I never would have, I mean, even Flatbush in its, in its peak, would this have, I, I can't imagine this happening in, in its peak. This is crazy. 
I'm going to open the floor for questions. Any questions, go ahead. Any questions, shoot them now. I ain't going to be answering questions long. Big L boys, I'm kind of tired, kind of tired. Questions. Um, mind y'all, do remember Miami next month, Summit in Atlanta in January. Also, it looks like we'll be uh, most high willing making a trip to Little Rock, Arkansas next Friday for Black Friday. All right, look for the um, social media promotion on that coming soon. Also, uh, San Diego, will, will, uh, the San Diego camp will likely be at the border tomorrow in wake of this um, migrant caravan scandal thing that's going on. Come, Mikhail. We saw a sticker on the station that said no new neighbors. Exactly, man. Keep your white asses where you belong. Yeah, Street Heat. I've been hearing about that Sunrise Doctrine for years, bro. It's one of the... Like, these, these, these doctrines are so stupid. Our Instagram is at Exodus1715. Exodus1715. That's our, that's our Instagram. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All at Exodus1715. Yeah, Street Heat, tap in with us on the IG. Shoot me a DM on the IG. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, we'll put it out on, on the gram too, though. Like, I, I, I most I want to get that fly together so we can put that out. Brass and iron. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and 23. And thy heaven over thee, uh, over thy head shall be brass, and the earth under thee shall be iron. So in dealing with heavens and earth, you want the heavens to rain on your earth, so your earth can uh, yield forth fruit or um, you know, crops. But if it's brass, ain't no rain coming, and can't nothing sprout out of iron. So what it's basically saying is, figuratively, there's going to be a drought. Our land would have drought. That's part of our curses. Uh, Nicholas, um, you can get more involved if you if you're trying to um, join and becoming a member. You could email us. Um, outside of that, getting involved, you could, um, you know, oh, we always, you know, donations, man. They they go a long way. You know, we've been traveling more. We've been trying to do more, and you know, we're able to do those things because you know we're getting support. You know, we're getting support from um our audience you know people who are being fed by us through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai we give this to y'all free of charge you know but we certainly appreciate all support and the support that you give enables us to do more so we certainly appreciate it um why our Pacific Island is not in the tribes I don't ask God God did not choose um Polynesians Micronesians Melanesians and Astronesians he simply did not choose you know those groups of people they're not a part of his chosen seed um, no, they are not Neftali. They are heathens from the seed of Japheth, one of Noah's sons. Exodus 17, 15, like that, Nicholas. Yeah, that's the Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter is all like that. But if the email is just like that, but without the E at the beginning, at gmail.com. So Exodus without the E for the email, but everything else is Exodus with the E as far as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. <clears throat> <laughs> Sumo, you stupid. Chief, what is your advice for becoming more well-rounded in history and studies in general, or how do you retain your knowledge? Look, brother, um, there's one thing I can't teach you how to do, and that's study. Reason why I can't is because I just do it. I can't explain to you how I do it. I just do it. So it's, it's something that varies per individual, and, and what causes one to retain information is different for each person. Some people do good with flashcards. Others do good with reading aloud. Others do good with watching it in video form rather than reading it. Or some 
do better with reading it uh, you know with repetition so it all varies per individual so you know you got to kind of find your own groove in the spirit brother Ulysses Warrior. Should leadership be financially supported by members of a camp? If a man don't work, he don't eat, is what I think. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that a camp in and of itself needs financial backing in order to support on any real level. Um, signs cost money. Flyers cost money. Everything costs money. So I would certainly say that um, members of a camp, every member of a camp from the top down, should be financial contributors to the camp um, because they, we're all at in, in that instance in that aspect we're all a part of a body so us being all a part of a body um, we should all be contributors um, in the same breath uh, Ulysses Juarez would you tell God that because God is dealing with the Levitical priesthood um, the Levitical priesthood certainly function that way um, you know so you know, would you tell God that same thing? Um, what's the best source for learning the language, the uh, the language ancient Hebrew? Um, you're gonna have to get with brothers that are familiar with that. There's not no online source. Uh, actually, there might be. Yeah, so, a yeah, your little booklet. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you hit up House of David, Zion awaits. Um, you hit up Zion awaits. They have a Hebrew booklet that could help you really kind of start. But I, I would say learn it from brothers who are. Um, you know, more astute and familiar with it would be the best way. Dream space. What does that have to do with anything? I, I would love to know how that makes dirty, stinking, rotisserie pig roasting, grass skirt and coconut bra wearing, overgrown, stanking Polynesians, Hebrew Israelites. Right. <laughs> Wait, don't forget big for nothing. Big for absolutely nothing. The least talented and least intelligent yeah. people on the planet Earth. Right, Stratomizer. <laughs> Stupid asses. Go through it, right? They're, they're <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. The dumbest people on the earth yeah. are the Israelites. As I imagine that. I, I'd like to know one thing the Samoan invented. What is the Samoan invented? What is the Hawaiian invented? What is the Tongan invented? What is the Fijian? What is the, the Aboriginal Australian invent? What have they ever invented? What have they contributed to you know the planet? I would love for somebody to explain that to me. Besides Lilo and Stitch, I knew you guys. Were going to go there. <laughs> Besides, uh, uh, what's that other one I got? What's the damn other one I got? Yeah, they, they certainly dislike white people. They, they Hawaiians certainly hate white people, for sure. That's something that they really do.
Dream Space. Susupo Susupoki Fafa Finger. Que fella ufa. The hell out of here, bro. I speak that whole ass language too. Bet you ain't know that. Susupoki. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Hawaii is irrelevant, man. Um the Polynesians tend to be culture vultures to a lot of Israelites, certainly. Culture vultures, they want to rap, they want to gang bang, etc. So, you know, that that's what they do. They're not cool with us. They steal our culture. They hate our guts. And nobody can tell me anything otherwise because I know them and I know them well. All right. I know them well. In high school, I was running through all their little females. I went to their houses. I met their parents, etc. I know how they are. So you can't tell me nothing about Jaffa's, man. Bring that out, my wallet, man. All right. We don't want no damn rotisserie pork at the Passover. Stop it. All that spam you niggas eat, y'all think you the chosen people of God? You got to stop it. <laughs> Hazai Zav, you already know. Man, you dreaming, man. You certainly dreaming. And stop sweeping at nighttime. All right, you know what will happen to you. You keep sweeping at nighttime, dream space. Hell out of here, man. Nah, the Samoans is not part. I, I would love to understand how the Samoans are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. That would be very interesting for somebody to draw me a diagram of how that works. GOCC, the only people that push that, and they, they doctrine is that they say aloha when you get off an airplane. And only the Hawaiians do that. The Samoans don't even do that. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a beautiful precept. Um, Arise, Israel, Issachar. Um, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Lest thou be filled up with the vomit. You know, so you, you have to get your um your own. Uh, you know, you everybody has a different measure of honey that they can eat. And the scriptures is likened to the honey. You know, so. That's a um, that's a powerful precept. Do the spirit of power, yeah, by But all I'm gonna do is I see ain't really no questions, so I'm gonna get up out of here. Again, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Shimi Yahweh Shai. We say shalom.